desde el Fondo Monetario Internacional, directora quien indicaba que la Argentina como Estado debía quebrar para ejemplificar a otros gobiernos a no hacer lo que había hecho la República Argentina. Alejandro Berkovich estuvo en Washington y estuvo en el mano a mano Ann Kruger, para muchos el ogro, dama de hierro del Fondo Monetario Internacional, por primera vez habla para la República Argentina. Kruger, la dama de hierro, la que protagonizó las negociaciones de último momento en 2001, antes del colapso de la convertibilidad y antes de la peor crisis que haya vivido la Argentina. A ella vinimos a entrevistar aquí, a Washington, a la sede de la John Hopkins University, donde ahora es profesora, ya retirada del Fondo Monetario, y curiosamente a muy poquitas cuadras de la Embajada Argentina en Estados Unidos. I think the IMF is in part responsible of that problems that Argentina had in 2005. No. Not at all? No, I don't. I don't see why. Because of the policies that the IMF recommended during the 90s and the, the last 90s especially. Well, I mean, first off, many of those policies had to be undertaken anyway. I mean, you, know, you know what inflation was in, in, in 1992 or so. I mean, Argentina simply had to do something. It wasn't a matter of going along that course. It would have just made the crisis sooner. <laughs> That's all it would have done. I think the, the, the big problem in Argentina before 2000 was fiscal, in that you had the provinces in the center, and if you looked at the two together, uh, their fiscal stance was unsustainable. You, you mean th there should have been a fiscal adjustment before and stronger. Yes. That would have avoided, that could have avoided the thing. No, as I said, I haven't worked the numbers to do that because by the time I got there, it was irrelevant. But wouldn't, wouldn't they uh, involve, uh, I mean, stronger sacrifices for the people in Argentina? But there were going to be sacrifices. When country, any country, not just Argentina, has been spending beyond its means, which Argentina had been doing, mm -hmm. there's going to be a painful adjustment. And the question is not, can you avoid it? The question is, how do you make it as little painful as possible and still get the adjustment time? For the first part, there is more of Ann Kruger. The responsibility of De La Rua, Cavallo, and the other officials that you, you met in office. Well, I, I joined the fund right in the middle of the mess, not at the beginning. But I think it was probably already true that Argentina really had to do something. And I think there was a big delay from maybe sometime during, let's say, the second half of 2001, uh, when it was clear something would have to give until something did change uh, that maybe had a cost. But I don't know whose fault it was, and maybe I'm not even right. The authorities kept, they, they stick to the convertibility, to the 101 peso peg to the dollar. And the IMF, instead of recommending doing anything else or something else, they just kept lending money to sustain well, I'm not, convertibility. I'm not sure, first off, that's true. I think there were a lot of discussions that took place behind the scenes. Uh, and it was the Argentine authorities to continue with convertibility. There would have been ways to indeed make, make that sustainable had the authorities been willing then to tighten up on fiscal policy enough. But that's what didn't happen. You say the IMF couldn't say to the authorities that the convertibility was unsustainable. I think that was said. You think it was unsustainable? I said I think that was said. Oh. But not in public. Uh, the IMF uh, kept lending money to Argentina during all 2000 and 2001, and the policies that were displayed those years were uh, ended in a disaster. Wh why the IMF did that? Why, why the IMF kept lending money? Well, the obvious answer is that Argentina would have been in greater difficulty in, in, immediately, and the Argentine authorities wanted the loan. Uh, it, it isn't so that the Argentine authorities didn't want the money. Uh, they, the IMF will never force anybody to take money. Uh, there always has to be an agreement, and the government always has to ask for it. And quite clearly, by the time in 2000 and 2001, without IMF money, already the authorities would have had to change course much faster. Now, maybe that would have been a good thing, but it, you can't say that the IMF had somehow made that happen. I mean, that was the authorities' choice. In 
last years, Argentina has grown more than those years and not following the IMF policies. Well, first off, Argentina shrank 20% between about 1998 in 2003 or 4, whichever is right year. So a 20% drop in GDP, the real question is, you call it growth, would you just come back to where you were? No queremos deberle más al fondo. Queremos tener políticas independientes. Y estamos tratando de salir de ese desendeudamiento. Porque no puede ser que por el endeudamiento que tengamos con el fondo, el fondo nos quiere imponer las políticas internas y externas que la Argentina tiene que llevar. Este es un país soberano. No country has to follow any of the IMF recommendations, except when they owe the IMF money. I'll probably get in trouble for that interview with the Argentines. Yeah, you cannot be more in trouble with Argentines. <laughs> Bueno, Berco, vamos a una síntesis de... ¿Te parece? Una frase muy fuerte, Gato, sí. la que dice Hubo gestiones secretas, advertencias secretas al gobierno argentino de que la convertibilidad sí. no se podía sostener. Y le preguntamos, ¿cuándo? Desde 1998. Uh -huh. Y sin embargo, le siguieron prestando, no solamente a lo que quedaba del gobierno de Menem, sino a toda la administración de la Rúa. Muy fuerte también eh, cuando alude a que los países eh, no necesitan eh, hacerle caso al FMI a menos que le deban plata. Y si le deben plata, bueno, sí, evidentemente tuvieron sus condicionamientos. Eh, la posición sigue siendo la misma, la de Ann Kruger. Argentina debió haber ajustado antes y mucho más fuerte y los sacrificios iban a llegar igual. No importa si ese ajuste hubiese implicado grandes sacrificios. Una posición que no cambió, ahí hay que reconocerle eh, coherencia, eh, consistencia, eh, pero una posición que evidentemente sí fue revisada por el Fondo Monetario, que cambió y mucho desde aquel momento su relación con los países. También en muchos casos terminó la relación con los países porque le pagaron las deudas. No fue solamente Argentina, fue también eh, Uruguay, fue también Brasil, fue también Rusia, fue también Turquía. Países que eh, lentamente se alejaron de sus recomendaciones, pero también de sus préstamos de stand-by y de otro tipo. Muy bien. Adolfo. 